Today we're on the driving range and we're hitting shots with a clean club face and a dirty club face to see is there a major difference. And Thomas, I think there is a major difference based on my own experience. So golfers, if you like this content, make sure you subscribe to our channel, make sure you like the video and make sure you leave a comment as well. Drew, do you clean the grooves in your clubs all the time? Uh, I try to, yeah. Uh, I'm certainly wiping off the club face. I don't really usually get as detailed as going inside the grooves though with a tee like that, but maybe I should be. Yeah, may maybe. Uh, I don't do it all the time either. So definitely have noticed that performance can be influenced if you have dirt in your grooves. Specifically spin and launch angle. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna okay. test that today. So we today have a gap wedge and a seven iron. We're gonna hit some shots with clean grooves and then we're going to put some dirt in the grooves and find out just what happens. Yeah, and I'm very intrigued by this because I am, I mean, if you're in on the course and well, I have a lot of buddies that don't even worry about it. They get, they go months without cleaning the club face and that can be an issue and I can't even look at those clubs. But um, just from a performance standpoint, they're probably losing a lot of performance. Um, if you have your face all dirty, you're kind of, all the technology that these manufacturers put onto the club face, you're losing all that if the clubs are dirty. You are, especially your wedges. Your wedges, you rely on that spin. You want that ball to drop and mm -hmm. stop for you. If they're not clean, that ball is going to release out. You're going to maybe have a 20 footer instead of a 10 footer. And we all know if you're close to the hole, you're going to make more putts. For sure. Well, I'm very curious to see what happens here. Thomas, are you ready to hit some shots? Let's find out. So Drew, first off, we're going to start with clean grooves for the 52. We're going to get some baseline numbers. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Just a little left of it. That felt solid. Yeah. Launch into the sky. All right. All right. So we've got three shots. Now, what is your expected, like, what would you expect the distance to be on those? Around about 120, 130. Yeah, I mean, carry 125.7. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So yep. spin was a little over 10,000. So it actually brought, brought the ball back a little bit to 124.5 average. Okay. That's a decent amount of spin. So yeah, you got, well, 10,501 was the spin on average. Um, things to note, I think we'll probably pay attention to what launch angle probably. Um, launch angle was 26.1 okay. on that one, or on those three shots on so average. So 26.1, the spin was about 10,000. Yeah. So my hypothesis here is that launch angle probably will launch higher with okay. dirt in the grooves and spin rate will probably be lower. Okay. All right. We already have a hypothesis. Let's, let's do the experiment now. Right, let's uh, put some dirt in these grooves. Holy. <laughs> that launched pretty high. That's like a high knuckleball. What's what is your guess on the spin? Uh, based on that shot, six thousand maybe. Fifty-one thirty-three. Fifty-one thirty-three. Launch angle was thirty-five point nine, so that's wow. almost a ten degree difference. That's crazy. It's yeah. definitely a higher ball flight. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, the spin was a little bit higher, 78.86, but still, you know, what, like 3,000 almost uh, lower than the, the average of those first three when it was clean. And your launch angle dropped a little bit there, but still 30.8. So still some stark differences. And actually, the, the funny thing about it is that now this is with normalized on track, man, but like the distances are actually pretty similar overall because you get higher launch and the higher ball flight. But with the spin, it doesn't, you know, the, it's not affected as much, so it still does carry, right? Right. Whereas with the, the other, you know, with the, the clean grooves, it's a lower launch, but more spin kind of keeps it in the air, so it flies It's like it's far. backing up a little bit yeah, for me. Yeah, so that's the, the way it gets there is a little bit different, but it still gets to the same spot. Right. Same yardage, anyway. Let's get one more here. That was a high launch. Yep. Yeah. I hit that right out of the middle of the oh, face. Yeah. 37.3, well actually 36.8 launch angle. Spin was 41.27. So Yikes. we're seeing some major differences here uh, after three shots with each when the wedge, um, I mean, 
I'm gonna bring these up on the table here. So there's just no friction there. No. It's just the grooves are there for a reason to generate spin, and there's just no spin. The bowl is just it's gliding, gliding up the face without any. It's gliding instead yeah. of like grabbing. Like it's, it's there's no interaction. That's how these grooves are designed. When manufacturers, you know, some of them do the milling, the laser cut, whatever you want to call it, with the the grooves but it's designed to interact with the cover of the golf ball. And it's just not happening when there's dirt in between the grooves. And the result is 8.4 degrees higher launch angle. And spin is more or less cut in half. I mean, it's 57, 16 on average with dirt in the grooves. And it's 10,501 with clean grooves. How about the consistency number? I'm, I'm willing to bet the consistency number was better with uh, the deviation. Clean oh yeah, oh yeah, the deviation, um, dirty grooves, 1589. It's not good uh, when you got 281, a 281, 281 clean. So yeah. like even it's also more predictable because you know the reaction that the ball is gonna have off the face. Dirty with the dirty, uh, you know, face. I mean, you might get some grab, might get no grab at all. It's just you, it's kind of a toss-up. Well, you you brought up an interesting thought where you're like, yeah, it's kind of going the same distance. It is kind of going the same distance. But if you are a better wedge player and you're expecting that thing to fly on the right trajectory that you want it to, fly it in to generate spin to get yourself a shorter putt. Yeah. You're going to want to know what it does every single time. You don't want it to be just, oh, on average, it's going to go that distance. Yeah. You want to know what it's going to do every well, single time. Well, and these are also full swings. If you're getting into those 80 yards, 70 yard shots where you're kind of relying on that spin, to, you know, hopped and stopped, like you like to say with your shots. And with a dirty club face, it's just not going to stop. It's just going to kind of bounce and then keep rolling out. Right. Well, uh, should we test 7 iron now? I, I'm curious on 7 iron because mm -hmm. I don't know, can it even be cut in half with 7 iron? It's not, there's not as much loft on it. It's going to be in that six to seven thousand range. Right, but um, there's not as much loft on the seven iron, so you, you, I would expect maybe not as much difference, but yeah, we'll find yeah. out. I'm curious. Bang. Nice and straight. You can swing again. Just a little further right on that one. So looking at the averages there for the seven iron with clean grooves, average of 72.23 spin, launch angle 17.4. Those were kind of the two that we really noticed the difference, um, the main metrics in the wedges. So curious now, so you're thinking then based on the wedges, it won't be as stark of a difference, but you'd still expect that launch angle to go up from 17.4 and the spin to maybe go down a little bit. Yeah, I would expect it to be the same trend. I just don't know how much it's going to right. actually influence. Right, it might not how much the, the effect will be just because right. lower loft and, yep. um, yeah, and hitting it a little bit further too, but yep. we'll see. Okay. That's solid. Dude, that one looks like it doesn't have a lot of spin, but this also, we'll it's, see what track it's It just seems like it's on a very similar trajectory. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Interesting, actually, on that one. So, the spin on that last one was actually 7802. That was the highest spinning shot so far. Interesting. Um, but overall, the launch angle, on average, higher by one degree, 17.4 to 18.4. And even with that spin being so you, the, the, the consistency factor is what's coming into play here, is what I'm saying. Right. So, because on those three shots where you had a dirtier club face, the first swing spin was 72.46, then the spin was 65.34, then it was 78.02. Okay, That's so... That's a pretty large difference overall. I mean, the, that deviation number is plus or minus 519. It is, but I guess in that average, it's gotta be pretty close to clean groove average. And, oh yeah, it is. 71.94 spin versus 72.23 with clean. So, so the spin was pretty consistent. Launch was a little bit higher, but like negligible. So with the seven iron, it's just that the consistency might be more, you know, there might be more variance there versus you just clean your grooves. You're gonna have a little bit more of an expectation um, of what that shot's gonna look like. 
Right, and what I found interesting was when I was trying to put dirt in the grooves, the grooves are different with a 7-iron yeah. and they're different with a, with a wedge. So when I was putting dirt in, I was having a hard time to get the dirt to stay in the, in the grooves because these grooves are shaped a little differently versus a wedge, which the dirt stayed in the grooves a little bit, little bit easier. Yeah, so I mean, that's another factor we should note here is, you know, the, the, the grooves on a wedge are actually really designed. I mean, they, there's a, you know, different techniques and whatnot, but the ultimate goal is to provide that spin, that bite, that interaction with the golf ball. There's not as much of that in the irons um, with any iron set. I mean, the grooves are a little different. Obviously, there's gotta be some interaction, but it's not to the level of a wedge. So just by nature, that difference is gonna be not as, as noticeable with an iron. Right. Uh, one other number we didn't talk about was ball speed. Is there any differences in ball speed when I have dirt in mm -hmm. the grooves versus dirt not in the grooves? Um, there really isn't. Uh, so you with the dirty seven iron, you swung a little bit faster, like, you know, six tenths of a mile an hour, nothing major. Right. But so the, the ball speed then was 1.2 miles an hour higher. Okay. Um, so it was about the same. Yeah, and the same with thing with the wedge. I mean, you it was 100.0 versus 101.6, so relatively similar with ball speed there on okay. both. So really the difference is with the wedge especially was just that spin and launch angle was pretty drastically different. Right, and I think, yeah, it's the wedges where you really need to pay attention to and make sure you have clean grooves, not only clean grooves, but also relatively good grooves as well. Yes. So if you want to make sure you keep your wedges in a good place, make sure you keep those grooves nice and clean and replace them when you need to, when they start right. getting worn. That's one other important thing. I know Titleist, for example, you know, they've talked about 75 rounds of golf. Mm -hmm. If your grooves have started to get worn a little bit, you lose about a thousand RPM to spin. So yep. that's, that's quite a lot. And imagine you have clubs that to have bad grooves to start with, and then you're getting dirt in those grooves, it's gonna be by I mean, hitting off the performance that you, you know, what you paid for for those wedges, you're not getting that performance if you're not keeping those grooves clean. So that's uh, what we're, I mean, especially with the wedges, that's what we're gonna be sort of advising today is when you hit that shot with a wedge, whether it's a full swing, whether it's a bunker shot, whatever it might be, make sure you clean those grooves before the shot, make sure you clean them after, make sure that those things are ready to go. So you do get the performance that you're paying for that you're investing in from that golf club. So, right. um, Thomas, uh, anything else you want to cover today? Otherwise, clean your grooves. <laughs> I think I said it before, consistency. Yeah. Your wedges are your scoring clubs. You want to know what it's going to do every single time. The only way to do that every single time is to clean your grooves every single time mm -hmm. and make sure your grooves are in good shape. Absolutely. Well, golfers, um, if you like this content, once again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video and leave a comment. And uh, we'll have a lot more videos like this with kind of some interesting topics coming at you. Um, otherwise, Thomas, thanks for hitting the shots today and uh, providing your insight. Not a problem.